In this problem, we're looking for the net force on charge 3. So first we look at charge 1 and charge 3, and we realize that they are going to create a repulsion. Since they are both negative charges, they will repel each other. So charge 3 will be pushed to the right, and it will be pushed up. Then we look at charge 2 and charge 3, and we realize they are also both negative, so that also will be a repulsive force. So in order to find these forces, we have to use our force electric equals Coulomb's constant, charge 1, charge 2, and R squared. And we need to do this twice. So before we can do this, we need to find the distance between the charges. That would be the R in the equation. So we make a triangle for charge 1 and 3 and we realize that the distance between the charges will be the hypotenuse of this triangle so we know the horizontal leg we know the vertical leg and we can find the radius between charge 1 and 3 so we make sure we convert that to meters plug it in as our radius plug in charge 3 and charge 1 as the two charges. Make sure you change them from microcoulombs to regular coulombs. Don't worry about the signs for this problem. The direction of the force is obtained by remembering that like charges repel. Once we get the force, we also need to know what angle it's going to be on. The angle is obtained by looking at our triangle that we drew for distances using tangent of our angle being equal to the opposite, in this case 28.2, over the adjacent, in this case 31.89. Once you get that angle, you should realize that will be the same as the angle of the force. So you take that force and you break it up into an x part and a y part. Okay, we then switch over to charge one, I'm sorry, charge two and three. Again, we know it's going to be a repulsive force. We need to find the distance and the angle. We do it the same way we did before. We get the hypotenuse of this green triangle. That'll be the uh, radius for charge two, three. Okay, when we're trying to use the distance. Use charge three and charge two as your two charges. Use Coulomb's constant, 9e to the 9th. Calculate your force. Once you get that force, break it up again into an x part and the y part. We need to find the net force, so we do it separately. We take the two forces in the x direction, the green one and the blue one. And since one is going one way and one is going the other way, we subtract. Whichever way, whichever one is bigger, that's the direction that the net force in the x direction will point. Okay, and then in the y direction, since they are both pointing up in this case, we're going to add our two forces together. So we take the vertical part of the one force, add it to the vertical part of the other force we now have our net vertical force. What we want to do finally is draw a triangle. So we get our total force in the x direction. It might be to the right, it might be to the left based on which force was bigger. Then we take our total force in the y direction since they were both going up. The total force will have to be up. So this will be force net for the x this will be the force net for the y, the total y force. And we take that and we find the total force <clears throat> by using Pythagorean's theorem. This will be the magnitude of the net force. Once we have that force, we also want to get the direction. We're going to get that by again using the y and x components of our net force and a little bit of trigonometry. Remember, every case you do will be different. So you have to see if the particles attract or repel. 
you have to make sure that you get your distance done properly, your angle calculated properly. You must break your force up into components. You must decide if you're adding forces together or subtracting forces. The only, things, the only thing that's going to stay the same every time is do your Y forces as one problem, your X forces as another problem, and then combine them together using basic geometry and trigonometry.